Ten past now going on. What time do I finish? Pardon? 25 yeah. to just after 25. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And it's nice to see quite a few familiar faces here today. Uh, first thing I'd like to talk about with regard to stain removal is the equipment that we use. You must have good spotting equipment. And unfortunately, very often <coughs> cleaners, they'll spend probably £25,000 on a dry cleaning machine and buy the cheapest possible spotting table that they can. Big mistake. If you're going to be a good professional spotter, you've got to have good equipment. That means you need a table with steam, air and vacuum. Um, what woman would buy a hairdryer if it hadn't got an air heater in it? And you're trying to dry textiles with cold air on a cold spotting table. It doesn't work. At least it doesn't for me. Uh, the second thing is cleanliness. You must have clean equipment. Your spotting table should be as clean as a surgeon's operating table. Uh, one of the mo most common problems I see in stain removal is where cleaners have been attempting to remove stains on equipment that isn't thoroughly clean. Very often it's clean on the outside, but on the inside you've got um, precipitates inside the gauze at the narrow end of the table, which then spray up when you're using the cold water spray. As far as stain removal is concerned, always remember that stains are the customer's responsibility. Any damage that you do to the garment in, in your efforts to remove stains is entirely down to you. Um, you see here, we've got a couple of sprays. You do not put solvent in these. These are purely, in my opinion, due for spraying water. I would say around 90% of the manageable stains that remain on garments after you've cleaned them, you can remove with nothing else but a cold water spray. And that is not an optimistic est estimate, I can assure you. Uh, so we need chemicals for removing stains. Now today, I would say the vast majority of, stain of cleaners do not involve themselves in stain removal they involve themselves in pre-spotting and re-cleaning. If the stain doesn't come out after pre-spotting, pre-spot it and re-clean it. Not a good idea. Pre-spotting is the most risky side of stain removal, make no mistake about it. Uh, particularly when you're using kit chemicals. This isn't a, a pre-spotting kit, by the way. This is a specialist after-spotting kit. Pre-spotting chemicals when you use them, you're not in control, the machine's in control. You put the chemical on and you're hoping that it's not going to damage the garment in any way during the cleaning process. And you won't know that until the garment comes out of the machine. In stain removal, we are in complete control on the spotting table. If you're a bit worried about the colour, then you can go a little tester, make sure that it's safe before you proceed. Okay. So. I will be using pure chemical reagents. Those are my favoured products. But this is also um, a, a kit supplied by uh, Alex Reed. Um, perfectly good kit. I prefer to use uh, pure chemical reagents, but that's purely a matter of choice. The difference between these chemicals and your ordinary pre-spotting chemicals is there's a lot of, quite a lot of detergent in pre-spotting chemicals, and that can be difficult to flush out if you use them for post-cleaning stain removal. Uh, most cleaners do not use bleachers. I think if you don't use bleachers, then you're really handicapping yourself in terms of stain removal. Okay, you're not probably not using them all day and every day, but when you do need to use them, it's very, it can be very important. It makes the difference be between able to getting a stain out and leaving it still in the fabric. So, before we start, just one, one point. As you can see here, I've chosen a light-coloured garment purely so that it, it will show up on, on the screen. I think to remember, when you're spotting light-coloured garments, and whites in particular, if a white has been repeatedly dry-cleaned, it will almost inevitably be carrying some soil loading from redeposition from previous cleanings. If you then weighed in with spotting chemicals, either kit chemicals or, say, ammonia and soap, the there is a distinct possibility that you will remove some of that soil loading, leaving a clean place. And, of course, that leaves you with a problem. 
So first of all, I've got some stains here, curry stains, um, which I chose particularly because curry is very often a difficult stain for a dry cleaner to remove. And very often with kit chemicals, uh, it's difficult to remove the last vestige of the stain. Of course, there are many different types of curry. So normally, I would start on stain removal when it comes out of the machine, just using a cold water spray. But in this particular case, I'm going to start off with a little ammonia and acetic acid, purely because I'm very limited with time and I want to get on with some practical demonstration. I'm going to be dealing with two stains, three if I have time. The first one is curry and the second one will be um, red wine. Now I'm starting off with ammonia and I'm also going to use a little bar soap. Bar soap and ammonia are two of the finest spotting chemicals. They have a synergistic effect on one another. In other words, one enhances the properties of the other. Now, normally you would not start off with ammonia on a curry stain, but my experience is that it's well worth starting off with the wrong chemical. And straight away, when I don't know whether you can see that on the screen, but that stain is turning slightly pink, which is typical of curry when you apply an alkali to it. I'm now going to rub in a little bar soap. And the reason we're using ammonia and bar soap is that there's very often quite a lot of fat in curry. And ammonia and bar soap will allow us to flush that fat out of the fabric before we move on something else. And very often ammonia and bar soap will literally remove a curry stain. So put the vacuum on and just start flushing this out. Obviously before you treat a stain on a textile where you believe there may be some sort of colour issue you would need a tester to do a tester beforehand. And you can see that stain is beginning to lift out. These are quite deep-seated deep curry stains. Uh, obviously, they're, um, they were put on by myself a few days ago, so I've had plenty of time to soak into the textile. And we're just washing that through the fabric. And this will get rid of the, hopefully, it'll get rid of the fat and the grease from the curry. How close you hold the steam gun will depend very much on the textile that you're spotting and whether you perceive there's going to be any risk of disturbing the wharf and weft threads or whether you perceive there's going to be any risk of moving the colour. So that's come down quite nicely now. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just use a little bit of bleach on it to try and remove that, the last vestiges of the colour. Um, I use two bleachers, uh, one of them hydrogen peroxide. Now you can get hydrogen peroxide and I would recommend that you buy hydrogen peroxide if you're going to use it from your local uh, pharmacy. It can normally be bought in 200 ml bottles at 9% or 6%. I prefer 9%, it's a little bit stronger. And that's an ideal quantity to buy because peroxide is not a stable bleach. It tends to go off quite quickly. So if you, you know, you can buy it in small amounts. To me, that's the best option rather than buy five liters from your chemical supplier. So hydrogen peroxide is a bleach that's known in our industry as a safe bleach. It's a bit of a misnomer, really, because there is no such thing as a safe bleach. Bleaches act by destroying colour. But generally speaking, peroxide will not affect the colour on textiles. It will affect it on odd occasions. And I've found, always found that the problem with peroxide is uh, familiarity breeds contempt. You get so used to using it and not taking the colour out that eventually you'll stop testing and then the next thing you come to is a designer garment. You don't test it and you take the colour out. Don't, don't, don't phone me, it's cruel old world, it's your fault. So I'm going to put a little peroxide on this. 
this is nine percent and I would have tested it beforehand but if it takes the color out well I wouldn't have I wouldn't have spotted it because I would have checked that first also with um, with peroxide it's a good idea to use one single drop of ammonia a peroxide is normally sold slightly acidic to maintain, help maintain its stability and if you put a drop of um, ammonia on that will help to neutralize it and help to release the oxygen in the bleach so now we'll start again and we're just warming it with a steam gun because peroxide and the other bleach that I use, sodium perborate, they work best at around about 80 degrees centigrade. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Um, the stain is coming down. Can you see that on the screen? And hopefully you can also see how controllable this little steam gun is that I'm using. Unfortunately, we couldn't... Um, we couldn't arrange for a steam facility on the spotting table itself. We could only have an electrical supply to it. And so I brought along this little device that I made up a long time ago. Because I found when I was training, very often cleaner steam guns weren't working or they weren't very satisfactory. Now that stain, as far as I can see, is completely gone. Curry, uh, as I'm sure you'll agree, is what's known, uh, widely known, as a difficult stain. Of course, the difficulty with the curry will depend not so much on the, you know, the fact that it's curry, but on the stain at which, on which the textile is present. Um, maybe completely removable on something like, uh, you know, white polyester item, but then if you're dealing with a very delicate silk fabric, you may be up against it. Now, once you've got the stain down then we need to flush it out and I'm going to use high pressure water spray and then we need to dry off and this is why you need a table with steam air and vacuum so when you come to dry it off you're drying with hot air rather than cold you do need a good professional table with steam to do this. Now you can see I'm driving, drying from the outside and it's not having a great deal of effect because I'm trying to dry it with cold air. And you can see what the problem is. I'll try and get a little bit of this moisture out of here. Some I'm probably not going to have time to dry this properly, but we'll see. You'll notice that I'm using the air gun in a fairly upright manner. This isn't written down in tablets of stone, but normally we would use the steam gun fairly upright, the steam and the air gun fairly upright, and not at a ble an oblique angle to the fabric like that. If you're dealing with, particularly if you're dealing with open weave textiles, you're much more likely to distort the warp and weft threads if you're using the gun at an oblique angle. Now, if I was, if we'd got a steam supply on the spotting table, this would have been dry by now, I'm quite sure. Although it, it does contain a certain amount of viscose textile, so I'm not surprised it's really resisting drying so you can see that stain has come out pretty well completely so what I'm going to do now is move on to something else uh, a red wine stain uh, can it, can, are those showing up clearly yeah so first of all I'm going to um, spray it out with cold water. Oh, look, 
see whether there's much stain coming out. Not a lot. to use a little acetic acid. This is 10% acetic and acetic acid we would normally use on stains of a plant origin. It's probably the safest chemical that the industry has ever used and my advice would be um, to, to experiment with acetic acid. It's very safe, it tends to uh, set colour rather than bleed it. So if, you use, if you're spotting a textile where you suspect the colour may be loose, then acetic acid is definitely the safest chemical to use because it will tend to prevent the colour from urining. If you're using ammonia, that has the opposite effect. Alkalis will tend to bleed uh, a fugitive colour, whereas acetic acid will tend to keep it in place. So you can see that stain's fairly obvious, and I can see some of you uh, the chemical supplier is thinking, well, if I'd used my tannin remover of that, it would have gone by now. <laughs> um, where are we? So I'm now going to use a little peroxide on that. And then I'm going to put some ammonia on it, because if you remember... We used acetic acid on it. Now the red wine's changing colour quite nicely, isn't it? Yep. I think I'll put a drop more peroxide on it. And now I'm going to heat it with the steam gun. So remember, peroxide and sodium perborate, the powder bleach that we use, is, well, it works best at around 80 degrees centigrade and I'm heating that slightly and you can see that stain disappearing quite nicely See that's pretty well taken that out now. But again, you can see how controllable this steam gun is. I'm not blasting steam on it. I'm purely using the steam to generate heat um, to enable the peroxide to do its job properly. If the volume of steam is too great, then it will dilute the peroxide very, very quickly. And then we need to dry off. Now, I'm not going to be able to dry this off effectively because cold air just won't do it. So, vacuum on. And it's probably going to leave a nice ring. You'll all be familiar with rings when you're spotting, I would imagine. If it leaves a ring, then don't try and get rid of it all at once. Chop it out in segments much the easiest way of removing a ring. If you try and remove it all at once, you'll probably end up with ever-increasing concentric circles. Right, I'm not going to bother with, uh, uh, with this one anyway. I can't, I can't get it dry, so I'll have a look at this particular garment. Now this has curry stains on it as well. Now this is a different type of fabric. This has got quite a high percentage of wool in it. Now wool in particular, if you spot it with an alkali, 
it will have a definite tendency to go yellow. Yeah? So when you're spotting it with ammonia, and I'm just going to flush it through with the steam gun again. When you spot it with ammonia, expect to have a slight yellowish mark when you've finished. I'm rubbing in a little bar soap again. I'll give it another flush through with the steam gun. And you can see, you know how the ammonia and soap is really getting to work on this stain. Now, the other bleach that I use is sodium perborate. Now, sodium perborate is a powder bleach, and uh, this has been supplied by Clean Supplies. We're very grateful for that, Clean Supplies. Thank you very much. I when I'm using perborate, I usually end, uh, use the broken handle of a plastic spoon or teaspoon, yeah? And that will enable you to apply it in nicely controlled quantities. Apply a little to the stain, and then we need to apply ammonia to it. That will dampen the powder and prevent it blowing away when you steam gun it. And it also apply, it's also adding alkali to it, which helps to release the oxygen from the bleach. And then, again, gentle treatment with the steam gun. Very, very gentle. If you're not careful here, you'll end up blowing all the bleach away. And as I've done a little bit there, I think we've still got enough. There we are. Melt it into the fabric. These bleachers can sometimes be quite slow in their action, so you have to be patient. I don't know whether you can see that. I think I need to use a little bit more. I think I blew some of it away. Clumsy. There we are. Hopefully you can see that if you haven't got a really controllable steam gun that, that doing this is a bit of a non-starter. And that's about as far as it's going to go I think. Some of these curry stains are, you know, very deep seated. Perborate is my, usually my second choice as a bleach. It's very effective, but um, generally it's a little bit more risky than using 9% peroxide. That's my experience anyway. When we've done that, flush out the chemical. With perborate, it's very important to flush out thoroughly because if you don't, it will possibly leave a white residue in the fabric that can easily manifest itself, or apparently manifests itself, as colour gone. And now, when we've finished, I would normally polish it off with a little acetic acid. And that's because of the slightly yellowing effect that you very often get it with wool when you use um, when you use ammonia or an alkali. That can happen just as easily with kit chemicals as it can with pure chemical reagents.
Is it gone? Okay. Uh, right. If you're spotting silk, by the way, make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly before you touch it, because if you've got any sebum on your skin, then you'll possibly leave fingerprints on it. So in the last five minutes, and I've not tried this on this jacket before, I'm just going to spot it with a little um, hydrogen peroxide. Now, I don't know whether you can see, but this jacket one we had in FCRA some years ago, it, it's got a high proportion of viscose in it and the cleaner pre-spotted it with a general pre-spotting reagent, took the colour out. So I thought it might be good to just try a little peroxide on it. I say, as I say, I've never done this before, so I don't know what the effect is going to be, so we'll put some peroxide on. As I said, the problem with peroxide is that it so rarely affects the colour I put a little bit too much on there. So rarely affects the colour that we tend to become, those people that use it can tend to become complacent. And of course, um, they fail to uh, check every time they use it on a, it's used on a coloured garment and that can easily end up in tears. So this is 9% peroxide that we're bleaching this garment with. Already had colour removed with a general pre-spotting reagent. So it'll be quite interesting to see whether in fact this has moved the colour. dry it a little more quickly. When you're drying, the quicker you dry and the quicker you work on a stain, the less likely you are to leave a ring. And lots of cleaners do have problems with rings, but remember, work generally from the outside. And the quicker you work, the less likely you are to leave a ring. And it's, get, it's beginning to dry out now. And I think you can see it hasn't actually moved the colour. Yeah, there we go. And I think I've reached the end of my time slot. So, it hasn't moved the colour on it, as far as I can see. Uh, certainly not, to, if it has moved it at all, it's very, very slight, nowhere near the amount of colour loss that we'd got from a general pre-spotting reagent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've found uh, my li little demonstration this afternoon interesting, and uh, I hope you, it's given you some ideas about uh, using bleaches. Um, I say I couldn't manage in a dry cleaning shop without hydrogen peroxide and sodium berborate. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>